threats. I will smash his head. Anger. Get out of here. Desperation. I can't pay you. What happens when debt? You think you can tear my family apart? Tracks you down. Why are you holding uh, the, you the baby? To, to obstruct us. Yeah. We see Britain's most resilient High Court enforcement agents. Don't do study. Don't do this study. Dealing with every debtor's worst nightmare. You haven't paid us, so have you? Yes, I have. Because if you can't pay, I've just used our last pound to buy a loaf of bread. They'll take it away. Research has shown that 1.8 million young people under 25 are falling into financial difficulty as they take their first steps into adult life. A recent survey has shown that over 50% of young adults say they regularly worry about money, while almost a third feel their debts are a heavy burden. High Court Enforcement Agent Max Carraher and trainee Connor Jackson work all over London and the southeast of England, seizing assets and collecting debts. What we got first then, mate? This lovely cold morning. We're off to see Mr. Mac Zani. It's 7.30 a.m. and they're in Feltham, West London. With a writ to collect nearly two and a half thousand pounds owed by Mr. Mac Zani in unpaid parking fines. Just up here on the left. left. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there we go. There's an Audi and a... Looks like a BMW. There's someone in, mate. Movement. Yeah. If they belong to Mr Zani, the two vehicles parked outside the property could be seized if he can't or won't pay. I think someone's coming, mate. Good morning. Here to see Bak Zani. Is that you? Yep. Hello, mate. My name's Mr. Carraher. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Go on. Um, it's my colleague, Connor Jackson. We've got a High Court writ for you, Bak. Yeah, go on. Um, yeah, from... Is this way? Okay. Yeah, go on. Outstanding balance of £2,340.20. <laughs> so what do you want me to do? Make the payment. I can't make a payment. If you can't indeed pay it, um, we've got no other option but to enforce the writ. What does that mean? Removal of goods. From where? The property. This is not my property. Okay, but this is where we've got the writ and you live here. It doesn't mean it's my property. Yeah, sure, but you'll have goods in here that are yours. This is my mother's property. Mr Zani is listed on the electoral roll at the address. As there is no proof this isn't his home, the agents have the right to stay and enforce the writ. Now Max turns his attention to the cars in the drive. I want proof of ownership <coughs> of these vehicles. The, which ones? These two vehicles here. They're not mine. They're not yours? Whose are they? You're going to have to go find out. OK, obviously the onus of proof is on yourself, not, not us. What about this vehicle here? Not my vehicle. So you're not going to help me at all? You're not no, going to I'm just saying it's not my vehicle. With Mr Zani refusing to show evidence that the cars don't belong to him, Connor clamps the Audi. And Max inspects the BMW. Wait, 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 wait. I've got proof of that. Hold on. Wait, 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 listen, 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 I can wait, enter it and I'm going to. This does not belong to me. This Excellent. is what I'm telling can you. Can I see some proof, sir? Yes, I can. You Thank you very much. Okay. You can show me that. My car. Listen. Oh, that's all I've got. Listen, it's madam. Car. Listen. Excuse madam, Excuse if you show me some proof Excuse that it's yours. Please. Yes. Please, it's madam. my car. While Mr. Zani's mother, originally from Albania, argues with Max, Connor spots an open door and the agents take their opportunity to gain peaceful entry. Listen, listen to me. It's I'm my, listening. it's I'm my listening. house. Madam, it's don't my shout at me. L listen, it's my house. It's my house. Can I see? Proof it's my house. It's not my son's house. He's not. Madam, we're not leaving. Me. We're not leaving this property. It's very early in the morning. He's here. We've got a high court writ to say he lives here. Yeah. Madam, don't touch us. We'll just call the police, madam, if we get touched. Okay, we're not having that. Can you let us through? Give me phone. No, I can't let you through. Can you let me through? No. Why not? Do you want to find a place, mate? Because you don't have... Yes, please. Yeah, okay. I, I, I Madam, we've got a right to be here, okay? 
with Mr. Zani determined not to let the agents go any further than the hallway, Connor calls the police. So I'm a high court enforcement agent I'm at a property in uh, Feltham. We uh, require police assistance, please. But then, Mr. Zani takes drastic action. He picks up a young child and starts to film the agents on his phone. Why are you holding the, the baby? I'm holding the baby for you. To obstruct us? Yeah. Oh, okay. not to obstruct Seven. you. I think it's very irresponsible if you're holding a kid in front of me just to obstruct me, okay? I'm not obstructing but, but you. You we're not, came in you're, you're obstructing me. So what we're going to do is we'll wait here until the police, and then they'll tell you to move. Okay? That's right. If a person is willing to use a child as a human shield, I really think it says a lot about that individual. It makes our job more difficult in the sense that we don't want to injure children or get in their way. It's putting a child in such a dangerous position. Moments later, the police arrive on the scene. Morning. And Mr. Zani puts down the child. We were intended this address to speak to this gentleman here. Are you trying to seize the vehicle? We're trying to get a payment for the it's a unpaid parking tickets. My colleague's got the High Court writ as well. He's inside. We need to find out who lives here. Well, I don't live here. This is my mom's property. The property is registered under her, her are you, name. Are you mum? Yes. We come in. Well, one second. I'm going to translate for her. With the police now trying to reason with Mr. Zani and his mother, Max decides to take the opportunity to start looking for goods in the house. Come on, come in. We're going to start an inventory. We're going to start then, guys. But even with the police present, Mr. Zani still won't let Connor in and is refusing to stand aside. Excuse me. One second. Excuse one me, sir. Don't obstruct me. Do not obstruct me. One second. I'm Do not obstruct me. I'm not obstructing you. You're obstructing me. I'm talking to the officer. Mind out your way, please. I'm there. Okay. No, no, no. Take you, your hands off me. Mum, what's the break? What's the break? Right. I'm coming inside. My mum is classic. Please. Oh, sir. Sir, move. Guys, you'll be... It's obstruction of an enforcement agent. Please. Don't push it. It's my property. It's not an obstruction of an enforcement agent. We'll be arrested. We can't unless you signed it. No. No, it's my Guys, move out of the way, please. No. No, A straightforward debt collection has turned into a highly charged standoff. The case is on a knife edge, and Max and Connor must act fast to stop the situation becoming dangerous. High Court Enforcement Agents Max Carraher and trainee Connor Jackson were in Feltham, West London, to collect a debt of over £2,000 owed by Mr Bakzani in unpaid parking fines. Here to see Bakzani. Is that you? But Mr Zani refused to pay his debt. Well, I can't make a payment. And resorted to extreme measures to block the agents from entering into the property. I think it's very irresponsible if you're holding a kid in front of me just to obstruct me. The police were called to the scene, and emotions got out of hand. Sir, sir move. Guys, you'll be it's obstruction of an enforcement agent. Now, with the help of the police, the agents must calm the family down and get this debt recovery back on track. Right, guys, can we all move? Yeah, okay, we, listen, we don't want to. We don't want to push yeah, okay, you. You'll be arrested if you don't move. Honestly, yeah, please, you if you do move, you'll be arrested. Yeah, Madam, please move. I don't, I don't, Nobody yeah, wants to do right. this. I do not want to arrest you. But Why? You do not move. For us. For us. Just for us. At risk of being arrested, the debtor's mother finally lets Max and Connor pass. But they're in for a disappointment. There's nothing inside the house worth seizing of any value. The best option for us here is going to be to remove the vehicle. That's what we'll go for. The police run a check on the cars outside to get to the bottom of who owns them. But then, a woman leaves the house with the child Mr Zani was holding earlier and sits in the clamped Audi. Connor, you've clamped the vehicle. Yeah, I ain't going anywhere. And they're sitting there with a baby. They're sitting there. Yeah. 
Um, why not? Why not? I just think it's very Everything. unsafe. The lengths that some people will go to to avoid paying a parking fine, all the police time they're wasting, it's ridiculous. The more they do that, the more I want to succeed on enforcing a writ. Moments later, the agents receive news from the police, connecting Mr Zani with the clamped Audi. Mr Christian Zani with another insured driver of Mr Zani. That, that Zani. The Audi. And that's the Audi. Is he, is he just named on the Audi, is he? Yes. As Mr Zani is an insured driver on the silver Audi, and hasn't been able to provide any evidence to show that he doesn't own the car, the agents can seize it. Despite the fact that a woman and child are sitting in the car, Max must continue to process the vehicle as a potential asset. He calls the office to check if it's free of finance. Hi, uh, can I get a HPI check, please? It's Max here. Yeah. It's a clear finance, Audi A6. Yep. In silver. Yep. Uh, let me see, that's looking about... With help from the police, the agents persuade the woman to step out of the clamped Audi. I've got the paperwork. I have you, good man. That will add to the value. And Max calls a tow truck to remove the vehicle. The car will definitely cover the removal costs. As Max and Connor are no longer being obstructed, the police leave. All the agents can do now is wait for the removal truck to arrive. But minutes later, just when the agents think things have calmed down, Connor spots Mr. Zani tampering with the clamped vehicle. He's doing something down the side of that car. Is he? Yeah, I don't know what. Wait. Let me go have a look. Mr. Zani has tied the rear wheel of the car to a nearby tree. Right, they're strapping it. They call the police again. So Connor gets straight back on the phone to the police. I right, can I get the police, please? Thank you. If you could send some somebody over sort of as soon as possible so we can get this. Thank you. Minutes later, the same police officers who were at the address moments earlier return to the scene. Only this time, Mr Zani has recruited a neighbour and a friend as backup. It is lawful what they're doing. If you want to go to court and argue it, then that's your problem. You're preventing us from, from remo re removing our vehicle. Yeah, it's Property's damage. not yours. All for it, cutting me. It's not mine. The situation is at a stalemate. But then, the recovery vehicle arrives. Here we go. Truck's here. Hello. Hi, are you all right? But with a thick strap tied to the rear wheel, removing the car isn't going to be straightforward. It's attached to his car? It's still attached to his car. I want to see who's going to clap that rope. That's a 50 quid rope. But Connor thinks on his feet. Do you want to take the wheel off? Oh, absolutely, we can do that, yeah. Then will you be able to get it on the vehicle still? Yeah. Excellent. Can we crack on with that now? Sorry, yeah. Okay. Yeah, wheels coming off. Let's go. You're going to damage the vehicle, though. That's not how you do it. Don't touch or interfere, okay? You've got to change the wheel on the car. Once I get this car back, you're paying for it, Dodge. You're going to pay for it, I promise you. Good work. Unintimidated by Mr. Zani, the recovery assistant changes the wheel and the Audi can now be seized. But to be sure that Mr. Zani and his family can't obstruct them any further, the agents must now act fast. I'm just going to move the tow truck off onto the road out of the way of everybody else. But let's go. Let's let's move go. the vehicle. Connor um, instructs the recovery vehicle to leave the drive before moving the Audi away from the house. As soon as we get parked up, we can start loading it. Literally, we want it. We want to load this up as quick as possible. Max and Connor's perseverance has paid off. Almost five hours since they first arrived, the agents have a vehicle as part payment towards Mr. Zani's debt.
That was quick thinking on my part, that one. Change the tyre. Very difficult one. They try sneaky little tricks like that to stop us from moving vehicles, but unfortunately, if you have a debt to pay and you're going to behave like that, it just motivates us further to recover the asset. Mr Zani has 14 days to prove that the car isn't his. If he can, the car will be returned. But the debt will still be outstanding. And so the agents will be back. A recent survey by a leading charity reveals that families with children are more than twice as likely to be in debt than those without. One in five families with children in England and Wales have struggled with debt problems in the last year, with almost a third owing more than £5,000. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Colm, Lancashire. Right, Vic, enlighten me. What are we doing at this part of the country on a beautiful morning? We are going to see a Mr. James Longworth, Mrs. Terran Longworth. They need to pay us £3,991. The debtors, a married couple, owe the money to a nursery for unpaid childcare fees. Keep rolling, my good friend. It looks to be that one there with the castle outside. The nursery took the case to the county court, but then escalated it to the high court, and Mr and Mrs Longworth must pay today. Hello. Hi, mate. You all right? Yeah, I'll, I'll stay here at the moment, sir. So. I'll place. stay here at the moment, sir. So. I'll just ring the police, please. Yeah, ring the police, no problem at all. Um, we're after James. Yeah, and that's me. Is that yourself? Yeah. We're high court enforcement agents, sir. We've got high court writ, sir. Yeah, nursery. Is it a nursery for you, yeah, is it? which we're under dispute with, with the nursery themselves. Right. Well, we're here to collect £3,991. Right. If not, we are instructed to remove goods, mate. Sorry, I'm shaking. No, I'm, no, don't I'm worry about it. Up, right, because yeah. I knew this was coming. Yeah. Which is why I've got wound up about it. Yeah, no, no, don't right. worry. Right. I am in dispute with the nursery because they was getting tax credit help. They've turned around and said, no, we're not getting it. Mr Longworth claims the nursery received tax credit contributions towards their childcare costs directly from the government, but the nursery denies this, and the courts have found in their favour. Yeah. Can't pay three grand, I don't even earn that fucking much. Step outside, I'll, I'll, I'll be staying here at the moment, mate. Taz, can you ring the police? I've got people on property I have asked to leave. They haven't had permission to enter. Do you have forcefully entered? Well, we haven't forcefully entered at all. We don't you need your consent, so we've got a high court written, the door was unlocked. Everyone's got a right to protect the property. Nobody wants somebody walking onto their property with an intent to remove goods, but we are like a dog with a bone. Nothing's going to deter us, and we will stay there until the end. With Mr Longworth refusing entry, Stuart turns his attention to the car parked outside. I will stick a mobilisation on it. He calls the office for a vehicle check. Hi, all right. Could you do HPI for me? Or for Plate Castle. Refine it. Fine. Yeah. All right, Helen. Speak to you later. Bye. Hopefully we can use it as a bargain and ship to try and get some payments. Sadly, it's what we're in the business to do. But before the agents can negotiate with Mr Longworth again, the police arrive. Morning, officers. Are you all right? As ourselves, officer of High Court Enforcement Agents. We've entered this bit of the porch, we've knocked on the door, he's asked us to get out. We've got a writ of control, uh, made him aware he needs to make payment or we're going to remove goods. He's phoned yourselves, so he yeah, probably wants a bit of reassurance, that's all. Second one today, this. Hello, it's the police. The agents hope the police will help Mr Longworth understand they have the authority to enforce the writs here today. 
Basically, the police is giving him the government website to see what our powers are. He can ask me, I can tell him. But even with the police present, Mr. Longworth is still disputing the writ. We were under the impression that they got paid by a tax credit. Okay, you don't have proof that you haven't, they haven't been paid? No. Right, so let's cut this whole conversation short. They've got proof they haven't been paid. I haven't got £3,000. <coughs> Last month we were on the verge of losing the house. Yeah. We had to put my entire monthly wage <coughs> and my wife's entire monthly wage into paying the rent just to keep the property. We're lucky if we get £1,500 a month between us. And that's to live with two kids. For me to pay three thousand pound right it's now is impossible. Just... I can't do it. <laughs> right. I'm struggling to get through the rest of the week. I've just used our last pound to buy a loaf of bread. It seems that the family have fallen on hard times. The agents need to get inside the house to assess their situation and resolve the case. But Mr. Longworth still won't let them in. I'll stand there and keep the door locked. If, if, well, you can do that. If you want to be difficult, yeah. I tell no, you, if you want to be difficult, to be no, difficult. no, I'm not going to waste my time, no, mate. Sorry, I'm, I'm, just, no. I'm just trying to find no, out no. where I stand exactly. I'll, I'll explain to you exactly their powers. It's up to you if you want to work with us or not. It's very important for us to get into the property for various reasons. If they have got no assets, we're not going to take their word for it, unfortunately. We have to see it. Minutes later, the police are called to another job. Thanks a lot for your time, guys. Realising the agents aren't going to go away, Mr Longworth finally starts to cooperate. Do you want me to come inside and we'll have a chat? Right, OK. Basically, we need to prove that you only earn so much. I can show you on here. That's our tax credits every week. Child benefit, wages. What is it that you do, James? I'm a chef. Do you work for the same company? Yeah, he's a chef and a pot washer. It is that bad, I mean, now. That's the last the end of next week. It's clear the couple don't have the means to pay anything close to the £4,000 they owe today. The agent's only hope of recovering some of the money Mr Longworth owes is by taking his car. I do 50 hours a week, she does 30 hours a week. Just normal, average girl, working class family that can't afford to live because all the smackheads are too busy claiming every penny off the government, which leaves us with absolutely nothing. Stuart calls the office to see whether the claimant wants the agents to take the car. What's the value on it? Probably get about 400 at auction, it'll cover our recovery costs, but not much left over for the claim. And... Right, no Removing the car will be of no financial benefit to the claimant and could jeopardise Mr. Longworth's job. So Stuart throws him a lifeline. The vehicle's not being removed, mate. The vehicle's not it, being removed. It's going to put you in more debt, and what we're not here to do that. All the agents can do now is to work out a payment plan with Mr Longworth. So we need to sort some sort of payment plan out. £50 a month, £100 a month, I don't yeah. care. Are you proposing £100 a month? Yeah. Let me have a quick call to the office, try my best to get this accepted, then we can leave you to get on the rest of your day. Yeah. All right. It will be up to the claimant whether they'll accept Mr Longworth's offer of £100 a month. And I'm happy the £100 a month last 70 minutes they will accept is £200 a month, nothing less. Thank you. Bye-bye. The offer isn't enough. What they've said is they want 200 a month, the claimant. 200. 200. Is that something that you week. can reach to? Or, or try it for three months, see where you stand, and then phone us again in three I'll months. Try it for three months. 200 a month with a three month review, Vic. The case is resolved for now. But if Mr. Longworth defaults on his payment plan, the agents will return. If you don't seek the arrangement, we'll come back and we'll remove the vehicle. Mr. Longworth has been given a second chance. But as the debt will take almost two years to pay off, there are tough times ahead. Looks like your 50 hours a week will be going up to 60 hours a week. Right, take it easy anyway. No, all right, see you later. He's a decent guy, isn't he? Yeah. Always a story there. Always a story. Stuart and Vic managed to get the best result they could. But in Max and Steve's next case, they face a debt in a very unexpected place. 
Listen, I've just transferred Madam, please don't money. shout at me. I'm taking all the chairs and the kit. There are more than 160,000 voluntary organisations in the UK. Nearly half of them are small charities, including religious organisations. A recent survey shows that small charities with an income of less than £10,000 could easily be put out of business for good by a low level of debt. High Court Enforcement Agents Steve Pinner and Max Carraher are back on the road. Today they're in Luton, Bedfordshire, to collect over £8,000 owed by a church ministry. The name of our defaulter is In His Presence Worship Ministry. We're looking to collect a total of £8,412. The church pastors have fallen behind with their rent. It's not a very Christian thing to do, is it? And Max and Steve must collect full payment today. Hello? Hello? Madam, High Court Enforcement, here to speak to somebody from In His Presence Worship Ministry. What's your name, miss? My name is Matilda. Matilda, hello Matilda. Steve and Max. We've been sent out here to collect commercial rent that's been unpaid. Correct. There's an outstanding balance of £8,412. Matilda, one of the church pastors, is aware of the debt. But the agent's visit has come as a surprise. We didn't know the landlord had taken it that far. We were actually dealing with it. Yeah. So I didn't realise this, you know, he's, he's taken it so far, he's come to us as a shock. Yeah. He was supposed to give us to the end of the month. When we're collecting commercial rent from a place of worship, we do have to be sensitive and I respect everyone's beliefs, but it doesn't matter what organisation you are or what business you run, rent still needs to be paid and it needs to be paid on time. Matilda immediately gets the church's deaconess, Irene, on the phone. Yes, deaconess. I've got the gentleman. Okay, speak to him then. Hold on. Hello, Max Carraher speaking. Yes, I need um, some bank details. Oh, who's making the payment, madam? Irene Campbell. How much is it for? The outstanding balance at this moment in time is £8,412. Alright then. Let me see what I can do, yeah? It appears Irene is willing to transfer the money the church owes straight away. Okay. Okay. Not a problem. Thank you. Cheers. Ten minutes after Max spoke to Irene, he calls the office to see whether she's made the payment. Good morning, it's Max here. Could I speak to somebody to check a payment for me, please? It's not gone through. Okay. No. Keep an eye out for a payment for me, please. Yes, bye. No payment has yet been received. Hello, madam. But then Irene arrives at the church in person, convinced the payment has been made. Listen, yes. listen, I've just transferred Madam, please the don't money shout at me. into okay. an account. Yep. The oh. money's in there. I've got the time when Madam. I put it through. Madam, right? you, haven't paid, you haven't paid us, so have you? Yes, I have. Well, you, hold on. Madam, don't shout. Look, yeah. look, look, look. L listen to me a sec. Ten what? to one. What, you paid this? You paid yes. our account? Madam, we haven't been told this. We were told we're having problems of it going through. There's no problem. Is there, there it is. With Irene adamant that she has made payment in full, Max calls the office again. There is no money in the account for no. the reference number or in his presence worship. Got it. That's all That's all I needed you to confirm, that it hasn't hit our account. No. Thank you very much for your time. It appears that Irene has not transferred the money to the agents, but to another church account. But you haven't sent it to us, have you? The agents have been on the premises for almost an hour. 
Now they need to get this case resolved one way or another. And Max's patience is running out. Madam, what I'm doing now is I'm escalating the case, okay, to the sale and removal stage. The outstanding balance now is nine well, I'm not nine thousand. Right. You're supposed to wait. No, I'm not paying nine thousand. You are I'm paying, paying nine thousand. No, You're paying, paying nine thousand and no, eighty-four pounds. No, I'm not. You don't have to. That's fine. I'm paying if, eight thousand four hundred and twelve. You're paying nine thousand and eighty-four pounds, madam. No, I'm not. Then we'll remove goods. Take it. Okay. Sorry, we need to crack on. Just to update you, um, they hadn't paid our account, they had transferred it to another one of their accounts. I'm going to organise for a removal of all of this, we're taking all the chairs and the kit. Max hopes that his threat to remove goods will prompt action. Hello madam. Your pastor? Okay. His tactic seems to have worked. While they wait for the pastor, Irene tells the agents she thinks the landlord has acted unfairly. You should see the state of the building when we first came here. It was dark and dingy, it was a pool place. Uh -huh. It was horrible. Okay. We had to do all the walls, we had to take up floors. A short while later, Reverend David Foe Amoning arrives to pay the debt in person. Sir, we've got a bit of an issue and we're hoping uh, that you could resolve it. Um, we still haven't got payment yet. Um, we need to take a balance of £9,084 um, and would like that as soon as possible. The Reverend offers to pay the debt using a prepaid credit card. Max calls the office again. Hello Helen, it's Max here. Um, it's in regards to making a payment. The payment's gone through, not authorised. Okay. Yeah. Okay, not a problem. I'll uh, I'll call you back. Bye. Yeah, no money's been taken. It won't go through. Once again, no payment has been received. It seems that while there are funds available, the bank won't authorise such a large payment without 48 hours' notice. But as the agents are duty bound to try and collect payment in full today. They have no choice but to start seizing goods. Hi, Helen. Can you dispatch the large vehicles to us uh, now, please? We've done everything to prove to you that we've got the money we are paying in. Certainly, you may have the money, but we haven't received the money. We're dealing with human beings and machines. Yes. What can we do? Okay, so if you have to park up, please bring, let them come and take it. Just do, do what you have to do. Please don't take this the wrong way, please, okay? I understand fully, and you are what I would consider a perfectly respectable person, okay? But you must understand from our point of view, our office says nothing counts until it's in their bank. I don't mean that disrespectfully to you. And this is how they work and this is how they think. It's difficult to enforce the job on someone that is being honest, but at the end of the day, our paperwork says you are commanded to collect, and that's the stickler. And obviously we're there to collect on behalf of the claimant. So, yes, we have to take our feelings away from the paperwork and just deal with black and white print. Six microphones and some stands. Drum set. One, two, three, four, five. As the agents start to pack up the church's assets ready for removal, Max gets a call back from the office. Hey Max, uh, we're not going to go with the removal tonight. If you can get the balance cleared by midday tomorrow, um, bank transfer. So okay. midday tomorrow to pay it off in full. If not, if we can... By midday tomorrow, I'll um, arrange for removal vans to get down there and get them removed. I'll get all that wrapped up for you now, Helen. It seems the claimant has thrown the church a lifeline and given the Reverend and his associates more time to pay. You've got until 12 o'clock to make payment in full. I'm not going to remove the goods now. Please don't make me come back, sir. Just call to pay it. Thank you very much for your time. The case is resolved for now. But if the payment is not made by midday tomorrow, the agents will be back.
high streets across the UK are under increasing pressure and recent increases to business rates are cited as one of the leading causes. Business rates for nearly half a million commercial premises in England will rise to £8.2 billion over the next five years. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Bolton, Lancashire to recover a debt owed by a barbershop owner, Abdullahi Gay, to a business rates consultancy. How much does he owe? £3,178.15. Agents first visited Abdullahi two months ago when he agreed to a payment plan of £250 a month. But he's defaulted and now owes over £3,000. But Abdullahi has already gained a reputation with the agents. I spoke to him on the phone a few weeks ago and he was threatening me. Apparently when another bailiff went, um, must have been about six, seven weeks ago, he called up a few of his pals. They turned up threatening to like throw him in the back of a car and uh, all sorts of gangster stuff. I think it's this one on the corner, Faye Barbers. If Abdullahi can't or won't pay, Stuart and Vic have the right to seize company assets to cover the debt. Hello there, sir. Hello. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. A colleague tries to get him on the phone. Where is he? Is he local? Is he your... No, he's just literally left. Ah, oh, right, OK. He said, do you mind, like, obviously... He's not here, no, he is. So yeah. like, wait outside. We won't, mate, no. He's got on the phone to him, Tom, to get down here as quick as he can to make a payment. Hello? Yeah, mate, come to the shop now, please. Because there are people here again. What are you? I call enforcement. We need to speak to him. Oh, is, is that him on the phone, is it? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, can you leave the shop with the outside? We're going to have one. We'll be waiting inside at the moment, sir, because like I said, we no, need to... You don't have to be inside, so we don't have to be We are allowed to be here, sir, yeah. You think I'm fucking there? It's okay, I'm coming there now, Okay, no problem. Speak to you in a sec. People deal with debt in different ways. Some people break down in tears. Some people get angry. It's just part and parcel of the job. Nobody's ever going to turn around and say, you know what, I think you're great at what you do. I'm going to pay you in full. It's never going to happen. Minutes later, Abdullahi arrives. Hello there, sir. You all right? Yeah, good. Regarding this outstanding balance, sir, I spoke with you on the phone myself a few times. I don't need that. For what? Yeah, it's a high court writ, sir. So we're here to remove goods unless we receive a payment of 3178. Get everything. Yeah. That's fine. That's all I need to know. You know allowed to take my, my work stuff, though? We can. You know allowed to take my work stuff? Yeah, of course we can. Please? We are. We can, yeah. So that's what we're going to do, sir, I'm afraid. But then, Abdullahi claims that his past offers to pay were refused. Listen to me, I ring, I ring, yeah. I ring the office. Yeah, you did. I offer them, I give you £500 now. But sir, you offered £500, yeah, you know but you me. didn't pay it, sir. And no, didn't ring. I ring, I ring. That's what no, happened. Listen to me. Okay? I, I, so I'm not going around circles. Don't, 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 don't change the story. I'm not changing any story. You don't change the story. You keep on no, saying. I tell you, you keep on I tell, saying, no, sir. I ring you. You keep it's on. It's me ring you. It's me ring you. Yes. Yeah, I ring you. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I offer and then you said £500. No, no, so yeah, why didn't you pay it? No, why why didn't you say it? The guy told me, take your five hundred pounds. We don't want yeah. your five hundred pounds. I, I, I never said no, that. I'm I, never going to refuse money to anyone. Change the story. I'm not don't changing change the story. story. I'm not no, point change the story. With the debtor now in direct conflict with Stuart, will the agents be able to stop the situation spiralling out of control? High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor. We're in Bolton, Lancashire, to collect a debt of £3,000 owed by barbershop owner, Mr. Abdullahi Gay. I don't need that. But for what? Yeah, it's a high court writ, sir. So we're here to remove goods. But the debtor said he couldn't pay. Leave they get And tempers started to fray. I never said no, that. I'm I never going to refuse don't money don't to anyone. I'm not changing any story. story. I don't no, point out now. 
Now, with the agents no closer to recovering the debt, Vic tries to reason with Abdullahi. Listen to me quickly. We are now, okay? No, 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 come on, calm down. I'm listening to you yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Let's resolve the matter here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can resolve it. Look at me. Look at me. We can work with you today and the claimant and say, look, this is what's on the table. And try and tell the claimant that's the best offer on the table. The bottom line is, you need to raise something now to stop any further action, mate. It's great working in the team with Vic because he's very good at negotiating and I'm very good at making people aware of the consequences of non-payment. He's got the same goals as I have, it's just we do it in slightly different ways. But despite Vic's softer approach, Abdullahi still insists he can't pay. I don't have I don't have I swear, my, I swear my life here, yeah, I swear my life. My rent on the six pound a week. Here I can't even make five hundred pounds sometimes. It's not easy. It's a new business. I opened like maybe six, seven months ago. Okay. You understand? You gotta pay something today. You need to speak to your friends. Try and see what you can do. My brother, my brother is in Malaysia. Only one person, I don't have no family in the UK. I don't have no family, I'm my own, I don't have no family. Only have my girlfriend, my girlfriend don't have nothing. I come here because I married somebody, a girl come and bring me here. Now when we divorce, I don't have nobody. But you need to try and raise something. That's the bottom line. That's not my problem. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, I don't have fuck I don't have nothing. Yeah. Well, I'll go and get my clipboard and I'll start doing the inventory. All right. With Abdullahi adamant he can't pay, the agents hope the prospect of losing his business assets might change his mind. What are you thinking? Anything of value. What's mean value? Like value, couches, chairs. If you take anything here, no worth nothing. It's not going to change my day. If I take that chair or not, it's going to change your day. You need to raise money if you don't want your stuff to go. Collecting debt from small businesses can be quite tricky. In certain cases, the best option is to not remove goods because nine out of ten times that will close them down. Uh, we'll rather work with the defendant and let him keep his goods so he can earn money and actually pay the debt off. As Stuart and Vic start to take an inventory, suddenly Abdullahi makes the agents an offer. I can't give you £200 a month. 250 Yeah. A month? Yeah. So I can go with the 250 Yeah, I can suggest that, but buddy, we need something today. How much can you raise today? That's 700 Can you raise it today? No. I can't show you my account. If we went online. You see what's there. There's nothing there. Right, what can you pay today? Now, hmm? tell me. What £100. Can you... pound. No. £100. 250 a month. Or you can just take this guy to Stuart calls the office to check the claimant is happy with £100 up front and a payment plan to pay off the balance. You can pay £100 now and then £250 a month. You need to keep to that arrangement, mate. If not, we will have to come back and start all this process again. So are you confident you can carry on with that? Yeah, yeah. No, no, he says he's happy enough with that. All right, cheers. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Finally, Abdullahi hands over £100 and signs a controlled goods agreement. But if he doesn't keep up with the £250 a month payment until the debt is cleared, it won't be the last Abdullahi will see of the agents. All right. All right, sir. Take fun. care. See you later, guys. Yeah, and it just... See you later. The goods are now worth nothing anyway, so it's better to get something rather than nothing. We could remove the goods, close his business, uh, but the claimant's not going to get his money back because he's not going to be able to trade. Hopefully we won't have to come back again, he'll stick to his arrangements.